what's happening, you know. We just yeah. see people, you know, living flashy lives. But then now, uh, this DD story has unveiled uh, the dark, you know, part of this whole industry. Because one thing, a black abusing another black person uh, shouldn't be normalized. Because one thing that this uh, that the black people are usually against, it's like white oppression. But then yeah. when you now come to look at it, it's like uh, the black oppressing the black, you know, yeah. uh, is more than the white people actually oppressing the black people. Because yes. then now uh, things like this now actually shed light on how this whole uh, industry is. Because when you now come to see, like for a black person to succeed when you are under management, by another yeah. black person, it's actually kind of tricky, you know. Yeah. Because so they prefer to like be handled by a, a, a white yeah. on the level. I mean, because there's yeah. no difference at this point, because you still get yeah. exploited. Yeah. You know, Didi has shown it. Other yeah. other That's big artists have also, you know, other movies yeah, have well. also shown it. You know, they, yeah. they just take advantage of their own people, which yeah. is so unfortunate. But entirely, at the end of the day, his bosses or his handlers are white executives. Yeah, for Actually, 90% sure, sure. of Hollywood executives yeah. are white, right? Because uh, yeah. 50 Cent released another video. Uh, 50 Cent was saying that yeah. Didi, the, uh, one of the reasons why he won't be arrested yeah. is actually because um, he's a CIA bug, you know? Someone who's just oh, planted there. Right, you know, like just an industry plant. Yeah, to give oh information to the CIA. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, on one end, I can agree with what 50 is saying because... Yeah. Because he he's also been, been active in PDD's case. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Right, what do you think of that? Okay, uh, what Hillary? I think, okay, in Didi's case, yeah. that this is not the first case is being yeah, absolutely. planted against. Yeah. And if you check the most cases, you come like as, as a culprit, mostly, but the cases just slide. Uh -huh. They don't take any action, uh -huh. because maybe it's, uh, it's kind of, he got, people got his back, and now, if you see, if you check the recent story, the people who are on it, yeah. they say it happened, right? Yeah. But he will not be taking action because people are protecting, yeah. which is very. Mean. If you check the international law, mm -hmm. sexual harassment are always against the international law. Yes. Not in the can, but if you check the white white oppression rules, you yeah. will find like blacks are being marginal like they're being minimalized like mm. they cannot be charged with some case if the same case was did against a white person yeah it, it will take another another chapter which mm. will end he up would have already it. probably been in mm. prison yeah yeah or jailed example. but now if you check in this uh -huh. they will not take anything you, if it it like it just be just in the middle yeah, yeah in, in the media for sometimes just go to rest and that's how it will just yeah. Yeah. So hopefully justice will be served. And I remember there's a video <laughs> that he's talking about mental health and now in relation mm -hmm. to what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. When it comes to also stories uh men opening mm -hmm. up, I think at some point you've had this conversation before. Yeah. It's a little bit hard for mm -hmm. a man to I'll say openly say I'm struggling with one, two, three, four. For sure. Especially maybe if you're opening up to either a close friend or a family member, mm -hmm. or somebody you trust. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know in your experiences, guys, have you been through a situation at, at some point where you're like, at this point maybe, I have to, at least let me try share with a friend. But mm -hmm. you know, you want to make that move, but something keeps on telling you, you might appear as weak, yeah. they'll be shocked as well, they'll be surprised you're struggling with this. Mm -hmm. First of all, how will they view you? There's usually those irrational thoughts that cross your head. I don't know if you've had to experience that. Yeah, I mean, I've had uh, I've had such experiences, and it's usually very tricky because you know how the society is kind of shaping us. You know, like not even shaping us how we expected you know to be as men. You know, we're supposed to get keep our own feelings, not really talk about them. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, I'm seeing like nowadays most men you know are opting you know to like talk more, which is yeah. so encouraging. There's podcasts. Yeah, but now because you know some men feel like. What you open up, it's like an own goal, you know? It's like yeah. someone can use that against yeah, you. You know, sometime, you know, yeah. later on, uh, maybe something happens and then someone just comes back to you and then they, they bring up something that you told them confidentially, yeah. you know? So when something like that happens, it can, uh, it kind of also, you know, discourages you uh, to like open up or like talk about how you're feeling because yeah. someone might take advantage of you, Yeah, you know? But you know, I also struggle with understanding 
why is it women have it easy when it comes yeah. to crying, uh, being clingy, yeah. screaming, and maybe just, let's say, verbally expressing mm -hmm. themselves and, and also giving loud opinions? Because also, unless you work in radio like you, you know, mm -hmm. radio you give opinion, I believe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> depending on the house style of the station, mm -hmm. because you're broadcasting, yeah. so you, you are a talker. But there's ladies who would say, I don't like a man who talks a lot. Because yeah. if you're a man who's has a loud personality, you kind of become mm -hmm. a red flag. But there's those who love, you know, people like me who talk for radio and mm -hmm. TV because we are trained anyways. Yeah. So I don't know, that comes into play sometimes. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, now, um, like, let's say, let's take a relationship setting. Let's yeah. say you're, you're with your girlfriend or just how, you know, girls and boys, how they interact, you know, like in relationships. You know, some ladies are going to tell you, you know, they don't want a man who, you know, who is weak, a man who opens up, yeah. you know, because sometimes, you know, some of these conversations you might be having with your girlfriend, and then in her mind, she's like, what is this guy telling me? I mean, he's telling me too much information that I feel like as a man, he should keep to himself. You know, TMI. sometimes ladies have that, you know, yeah. he's a man, you know, there's yeah. some certain things that you let's say like your woman doesn't expect you to like, you yeah. know, struggle maybe with. Yeah, struggle yeah. with, so yeah. she expects you to like deal with them. But maybe yeah. you on your end, these are things that are actually pressing you. You feel it's like you mountain. need to talk about. Yeah, for it's sure. You feel like you yeah. need to talk yeah. about them, uh -huh. but then now you're like, how will she perceive me? You know, even though she's my woman. So yeah. So you'd rather like keep it to yourself it's and suffer yeah. silently. Than yeah. Or speak like out. look yeah. for other means to you know like to express to that express part. it rather yeah. than talking about it. And that's why you end up you know doing some wahalas. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if Hillary, I want you to jump in on the same. Yeah. Okay, in, into this, um, like you know the society which we live in prefer men to be strong. Yeah. They prefer men to be strong mentally. They shouldn't uh, need guidance, maybe from someone. And then if you check in, the, in a relationship, a woman prefer a man who is always silent. Don't talk too much, something like that. Because they is it true, ladies? Do you prefer a man <laughs> who never says a single damn thing? Like, boo-boo. <laughs> Boo -boo, not, okay. not like boo 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 boo, <laughs> but it's someone yeah, who is who is like nonchalant. Yeah, with nonchalant. Our personality. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No yeah. ahala. Yeah, you just okay. you just talk sense. You don't, you don't talk too much because yeah. they feel like if you talk too much, I have a friend who say, yeah. I have a friend, a girl, who say a man should not talk. Just come, yeah. just come to me. Say you need this. Don't don't make many stories. Yeah. Something. Like Yani, ongea tu like nikuskiye, just go your way. You should not make stories to build something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's not what men prefer. Men prefer someone who they can talk to, express yeah. their emotion yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. But ladies, they don't expect that because they, if you exp if you express yourself, they take it as a, as you are kind of weak. Yeah. Like this is. But is it us who made them? Pick it as weakness, I mean, it's them who've painted a picture that a man who speaks up a lot is a weak man. Like. But then we can also define mm -hmm. who is a weak man. I think at this point we need to <laughs> actually get into it. But okay. yeah, proceed. Okay, can I proceed? Like, yeah, proceed. whether the ladies perceive us as, as weak men or they just perceive in their mind. Yeah. You know, there's different men. If you check different types of men, we have alpha. Okay. Alpha man and yeah. a beta man, right? Okay. You know that. Uh -huh. So an alpha man or an alpha male uh -huh. is someone who is always that aggressive in his doing. And then you find like ladies prefer that person. So alpha men don't talk? No, they, they, okay, they cannot be controlled easily. And then they don't talk too much, they just do action. Oh, it's less talk action than yeah. words. Yeah, yeah. And then if you mm -hmm. f get a better meal, it's someone who will just come there, start crying. Oh, cry just baby. Cry baby, someone okay. like that. So that's the person, the ladies will say like, this, this is a weak man. But if mm. you have that alpha male quality, yeah. a, a lady will see you as, a, as an yeah. aggressive person, yeah. something like that. But we men, sometimes we can just be that alpha male inside, but no outside, but inside we feel like I need someone to talk to. Sometimes yeah. you are kind of depressed, you need someone to talk to, but you feel yeah. like if you approach this person to talk to, your, your alpha male quality will be 
outside you and you 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 inside that better well quality inside <laughs> you. Yeah. I love how you're building it and I'm seeing it like literally. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Your masculinity is living your body and yeah, your spirit yeah. Yeah, and I you're mean, now here becoming genderless or so becoming a female. Yeah, great beauty. So, <laughs> okay. literally so, ah. Yeah. So you'd mm. rather die and yeah, build yeah. this wall yeah, yeah, than yeah. be, I think the word is maybe expressive, like mm. men who are expressive. Do you agree with that? I wish we had a lady in this panel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what, yeah. how, what are the types of categories of men? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, what do you, what do you react? Mm, well, how do you react to you his know, sentiments? Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how he's mentioned alpha and beta. Yeah. And me, actually, know three. Because I know alpha, I know sigma, then I know beta. Yeah. Yeah, so like sigmas are the ones like... Uh, the outcast, the one who don't really care about, you know, like yeah. anything. They're just moving in their own. You know, like alphas are like leaders, you know, yeah. naturals. But then now the sigmas, you know, they just, you can't even control them. You know, they're yeah. just, like, yeah, they don't care. Yeah, <laughs> they're in their own world, <laughs> uh -huh. you know. Uh, but then now I feel like as men, it should come down to who we are, you know, yeah. deep down. I mean, we should move in the way that, uh, like, when you see me in a room, I'm supposed to be myself moving the in a way that you know i'm being myself not influenced by anyone and i feel like yeah. if we're authentic enough i'm a genuine enough yeah. i feel like you're gonna have you know these interactions easily you just be yeah. yourself yeah and uh, no matter i'm talking about expressive i mean that is you at the end of the day so yeah. you struggle to be the best version of yourself i mean yeah. you're gonna accomplish other things mm -hmm. that you know probably impressing a lady you know you might yeah. win mountains build companies you know, yeah. through you being expressive. Self That's how you can, Yeah, I mean, literally. you can get yeah. more business deals by talking yeah. to people. You know, sometimes yeah. when you look at the, you know, the other side of the things, you know, being expressive is something good, actually. You know, communication, mm -hmm. if you use it to, you know, to your own advantage, yeah. you can make way in this life. Actually, the greatest yeah. leaders in the world are great communicators. For sure, for from sure. From Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, you remember he's a legendary poem, yeah, I speech. have a dream. I have a dream. You know, yeah, that one great excellent speaker. The world. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, also, at the end of the day, just look at it. Yeah. yeah. Am I just trying to conform to what people think men should be like? Yeah. You know? And what, what is this that? filter of beta and alpha? Don't you think mm -hmm. that limits you? It, it limits mm -hmm. your, I'll say, your duality or your humanness. For because sure. if you're stuck under this beta filter or yeah. this alpha filter, this alpha, yeah. like you're trying to maintain that frame. Yeah. So you can't be yourself, like you said. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, trying sure. to be masculine. I'm trying to be alpha so that I don't mm -hmm. show I'm suffering. I don't show I have. But yeah. I don't know. Because yeah, I feel like, because uh, at the end of the day, life is duality. You yeah. know, uh, other times there is need for you, you know, to become an alpha in certain situations or you feel yeah. like you need to take charge, you need to take lead, become an alpha there. But then yeah. in other settings, you need to, you know, people need to see the vulnerable side of you. Maybe yeah. people like your family members, your kids. Yeah. So you can't be an alpha everywhere. Sure. Sure, you can't be an alpha everywhere. You need yeah. to know when to drop that act of you becoming an alpha male and now yeah. tapping into your, you know, your emotional side. You know, because yeah. you can't, I mean, for you to be a whole human, like, and then now mm -hmm. live this experience, you have to, you know, tap on the duality, becoming an alpha at the same time, and also knowing when to, you know, shift yeah. and now. Like just knowing when to balance between yeah, for sure. the two facets yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, but then yeah. let's imagine a situation uh, mm -hmm. that can, let's say, trigger some sort of like a mental health conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine uh, a very close relative dies who yeah. is so dear to you. Let's mm -hmm. say a mother. For, personally, for me, I lost my dad and I can, mm -hmm. uh, I can relate to that. Yes, it triggers a lot of emotions, especially if that uh, transition was traumatic mm -hmm. or traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of painful faces. Yeah. So I don't know, at this point, as a man, do you, can you tell the story of pain? Do you show it? Ama, you, you mm -hmm. wait until all the clouds have subsided and then mm -hmm. you go find yourself someplace and, you know, you hold another funeral. Uh, let me throw back <laughs> to you, Larry. Because in this case, uh, Everyone is going through crisis, yeah. and you know when tragedy is happening, it's happening for all of us in this family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's always that person who is strong. Sometimes you can even have an auntie who is the strongest, the strongest in that crisis, yeah. or even the grandmother. The rest are broken. Mm -hmm. So at this point, who should show signs of, yes, I'm overwhelmed, and I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to, mm -hmm. you know, hold myself together. Okay, you know, most of men, in yeah. most of the crisis, you will find that like, they tend to hold themselves to be that strong, they don't show emotion, but you find like after some week, you'll find that maybe they are in a lonely place, 
just themselves thinking sad even even f to say for example you went in the club you just find a man just himself just holding himself with a beer with the bottle part mm -hmm. yeah with the bottle talking to the bottle <laughs> yeah talking to the bottle you don't know not even with the mouth with yeah. the thoughts <laughs> yeah you just holding with the yeah. bottle don't not talking even using phone it's just like this is that now not mental health that's that's where the mental health because he can't have mentally yeah broken yeah he needs sometimes to to kill himself something like that but yeah. men majorly don't show emotions mm -hmm. they will show it at some at some interval but not at the exact place where yeah. you find like like in a funeral you feel like because you need people depend on him to handle things yeah so it should not be kind of broken yeah. as a part like it should not be active in the planning something like that but after yeah. the funeral you'll yeah. find it in a lonely place broken mm. Mm. yeah maybe that's where you may find probably trying to process all that energy again yeah yeah mainly mm. you find like in most workplaces someone some to someone who is bereaved you find yeah. like after the funeral they will take you in one week leave yeah yeah that's where likes just to re to recapture himself something like that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh wisdom do you feel like it's po it's it's not even do you feel can it be right for a man to cry publicly? Like, let's just say, mm -hmm. you've been told the worst of the worst right now. A phone call yeah. just rings and you mm -hmm. pick and it's the worst. I finally, personally, have experienced that mm -hmm. well, you know, <coughs> where it's not an easy call. Like, yeah. a phone call rings and you're told, you know what, that is gone. I don't know. Oh. Like, processing that and probably you just spoke like moments ago like for yeah. my experience i i had just left the house jumped into a boat going to my place for an event mm -hmm. and then like around 25 minutes dad is gone so that moment and everything that happened in between mm -hmm. there it's only god who knows but then i'm trying to create and curate that experience for somebody else how can they react especially in a monthly format because yeah this is breaking bad news mm -hmm. like it's dirty yeah. And it's heartbreaking and painful. Yeah, I feel like. So, do, how do you yeah. comport yourself and stay together? Uh, the thing is, I feel like one thing that you know, as men, we need to do in a crisis is composure. You know, because yeah. uh, crisis happens. You know, and uh, I'm taking an, uh, an instance, like let's say uh, when the COVID-19 just hit the country, like with the first case. You know, I yeah. feel like one of the first things that ever needed to do was to stay composed because yeah. like, that is the that was tension because yeah because unless yeah if you're not composed trust me you're gonna freak out you're going to you know do yeah. the most so in terms yeah. of crisis like let's say uh in that scenario you've received a phone call a uh, tragedy has happened i mean you're allowed to cry you know you're allowed to cry but then let's now, imagine you're with your friends in yeah. an event and you're the one hosting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or let's imagine right now, I'm on TV, yeah. and then I just see a text. But and anyways, I've gone through crisis. I've, I've lost my dad, yeah. and it was heartbreaking. So I'm yeah. using my experience. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. How do you stay together? Because yeah. these are things falling apart. For sure. And not just falling apart, like mm -hmm. badly falling mm -hmm. apart. Yeah. So now, uh, it all comes down to, because now also, you see now, you are a man, isn't you? Yeah. And then now this is a crisis. It's also how you handle it, you know, that, you know, now makes you more of a man, I feel like, you know. So, yeah. like, yes, it's a crisis, but then now, how are you going to handle it? I feel like your friends also want to see how are you going to handle it, you know. Yeah. Everyone is like, how are you going to take this? You know, you'll right. see the worst of the news. Are you going to stay composed? Are you going to freak out? What yeah. are you going to do, you know? So, yeah. as a man, I feel like you're also supposed to, yeah, have your feelings, for sure, but then now yeah. also try to stay composed try to you know control the situation you know because yeah. the other ways of handling that situation of maybe uh crying yes you can cry but then now in that particular situation is crying the best option like you know uh maybe you need to get home take yeah. a car but go you know, home, in this situation you, don't, you know you have no options bro yeah do you know for such a phone call you don't have options yeah <laughs> like, like, there's no guarantees of like it's going to be a or z yeah <laughs> As things are falling apart. I mean, if things are falling apart, <laughs> you're still trying to, you also have to, I feel like, uh, when they're falling yeah. apart, yeah. try to see a way, you know, where 
unaweza compose too bad unaona yeah, yeah like just be the man yeah, just, at this just point just try to just be the man, be the man that you yeah. are at that point so there's that like, song yeah. is it by Kenny Rogers that says sometimes you have to fight to be a man and sometimes you have to drop even your guard down and be vulnerable to be yeah. a man yeah sure. i think it applies anyways mm -hmm. but because uh, most of the time also for us men when we go through disappointments yeah most of us uh, I, I believe everyone has their own version of reacting to uh, mm -hmm. something bad yeah, happening yeah. to them. Sure. Uh, I've seen one of my friends bang the table. There's another one <laughs> stamped the feet on the floor. There's another one clicked. Punched the wall. Yeah, another one curses and yeah. says uh, 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 sen double sentences of F words in the curse words rather. Hey, okay. So it, it mm -hmm. really gets hectic. Mm -hmm. But then also when it comes to now, let's say you have to put yourself in a space where you have to now tell your friends mm. that this is what is happening but you're trying to find the words to explain because sometimes the more you try to explain the situation you find the more the pain the more the emotions keep yeah. on coming so yeah. you'd rather go or find like you said go to a place and process it on your own and then later on when you're good you can now come and tell them yeah. what do you make of that i'm like when you are bringing a news to someone with some something which is hitting you in inside you find yourself like maybe like for example on myself yeah in 2018 yeah i lost my dad i'm oh, sorry i was in high school i was i just got a phone call it yeah. was a, a random sunday i was just from doing a biology paper too mm -hmm. just a random cut so i just found a, fo a phone call like he dad dad is gone it was uh, on a sunday i just yeah. how is it how is that moment it was kind of at two moment, you just see darkness. Yeah. So I just feel myself. I just got composed. I just I had one best friend. Yeah. I just told, her, and then told him like, go sleep. Just get composed. Yeah. Then, after waking up in the the next day Monday, is when I broke the news to the class. Like I lost my dad. I yeah. took some time. Yeah to compose just yourself to yeah. compose myself and process that and then thing. process and then say like mm -hmm. it is a it is a natural death is always a natural plug so mm -hmm. you just take it you just process it, and then i just could confirm and then the next day you just yeah. have to take your time because even even in disappointment you don't just get and then break the news you feel like mm -hmm. okay it's happened let me take some time process myself that sadness maybe is some may fade away and then you find out and then now the time of breaking you yeah. you as a man you you might find yourself breaking down in tears something like that that's where now you see from an alpha male to a beta male to express yourself yeah. something like that yeah <laughs> it's interesting how you mentioned but uh, but i like that mm -hmm. it's interesting how you mentioned that you know death is a natural cause because at first when it's happening to you uh, grief this is a grief in general yeah. when it's happening to you there's that stage of denial yeah. some and uh, like there's several stages of grief yeah. denial stage then acceptance and then you try to inspire yourself and hold yourself together and then finally you say you know everybody will die yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finally <laughs> yeah me too i waited to figure out without place so i'm like you know that is gone it that it means anyone can die and yeah. i'm open to anyone dying for mm -hmm. me like mm -hmm. this is mine <laughs> i'm not afraid of people dying around me or even me going because it's mm -hmm. a natural cause like yeah. you said yeah. so it takes some time to yeah. process yeah it takes some time you yeah. process and that is grief yeah but also when you when when you when you when we look at how men process pain mm -hmm. i think now there's there's levels as well like for example you're going through a heartbreak a heartbreak is totally different from losing someone mm -hmm. yeah. but those generally that's a loss anyways either way it's mm -hmm. some form of yeah. loss because a heartbreak a deal gone sour where money has been lost uh, losing somebody very close mm -hmm. so the, all these things are painful yeah. and i remember there's one of i think he's he's called kuoma he said he said life is all about pain management mm -hmm. so how can men uh, manage pain positively especially in society today but i know pain is not a positive thing yeah. and now when you're adding sickness you can imagine now you're battling with a chronic illness and you have to always pull up i love mm -hmm. the way uh Ch chadwick bosman like nobody knew he was suffering yeah. from colon cancer and yet he was out here you know featuring all those movies so at the end of the day nobody sees it but deep down you're crushing you're crushing yeah yeah so um it's about like uh, diseases and pains yes so in terms of like pain i feel like sasa 
it's how you you know deal with it because one thing that when as a man when you're in pain one thing that you need to stay away from i feel like that we need to like openly talk about it it's like drugs and substance abuse because in the heat of the moment they're going to feel like you know they're embracing you it's like they're giving you comfort but then now they're doing more damage than good in you know while you're trying to recover from whatever pain it is maybe it's a co heartbreak and a co financial did gone sour sickness when you immediately you know resort to you know drugs and substance abuse i feel like you're just going down the drain you know now but then i feel like uh, the first thing that you're supposed to do in terms of like you know pain management am i recovery and healing process for you just try to you know think about the moment you know from an outside perspective you know don't think in the heat of the moment like yeah. all these things has happened to me just try to you know look at all the factors look at the whole situation once again you know uh, with like a clear mind try just you know try to find a clear mind you know inaweza kuwa ngumu sana and now in cases where you ca- you can't really you know clear your mind to think straight try to look for you know, other positive form of releases you know positive yeah. ways of you know trying to deal with this maybe now uh, things like praying you know prayer yeah. you could spirituality, you could, yeah, spirituality which a lot of men actually yeah. d- underplay or yeah, downplay sure. like i mean going to church being mm-hmm. spiritual being in touch with your spiritual self yeah, yeah. maybe like talking to like uh, your trusted friends Yeah. Going what about for therapy? Therapy, therapy? Yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah. You could also, you know, opt for therapy. Yeah. And I feel like things like that actually help you to know, you know, now look at the whole situation from another angle and you're like, well, yeah. I can come back and deal with this through yeah, this other way. It can be an outlet. Yeah, for sure, to, for sure. To the pain. Yeah. But also, uh, Hillary, when you look at the era we are in right now, we are seeing a lot of men come out to say their stories of abuse. Was it last week? Yes, last week on Monday. I pointed out mm-hmm. to uh, some of my co-hosts here a story about Robert Burnley who came out and said he was sexually abused by a house help while he was young and the comments and the comebacks we pour like a man you never get sexually abused a man if somebody sexually <laughs> abuses you that is pleasure and then mm-hmm. i was and, and stephanie was reacting and saying sexual abuse is sexual abuse either way but mm-hmm. you know in society today and also where we come from even in the african traditional society if you start saying or speaking such stories you are literally segregating yourself and people will roll your eye, their eyes on you they'll be like ah sasa why do you say that in your man you know yeah. but at the end of the day it's abuse so why do you draw the line between a man expressing the worst of the worst and just expressing himself because we are seeing most actually 90% of podcasts now are also being owned by men yeah. most mm-hmm. podcasts I could be wrong or right but maybe there's a balance between gender but mm. my podcast mingi is the corner my boys on all my issues zao the things that they're going through as well and the things they've overcome and the success stories actually encourage people to be stronger and when another man opens up about the worst of the worst another man as well gains confidence to say it because for us men you just need one man yeah. to say what he's been through yeah. and the rest will give you the worst of all yes. the best yeah. <laughs> because there's always that filter mm. like i'm afraid if i say something mm. what will my family say you know what will they think of me and from now on how are they going to view me right do you carry the same view yeah i can carry the same view but the okay let's start with therapy uh-huh. you know this therapy majorly there are women if you check the professionalism of the therapist you yeah. get that most of the women but women tend to be have another profession outside there you may get someone as a pastor someone so yeah. like i i had a story this a man who went to a therapist expressed himself to the lady not oh, the knowing lady. all right the therapist was the lady yeah, yeah. Okay. not knowing the to the lady was a pastor in a church yeah. so a friend who knew what he was suffering from yeah. was also attending the same church right so it was kind of something which is a uh, which was kind of uh, what did they say very private even you are free to talk in public you know men suffer different things really let's say something like masturbations which some you cannot say in public right and then now he shared it to a friend whom, whom, whom he trusts right yeah. then now the next weekend when this the friend went to the church 
you found like the pastor was preaching. Oh. So it is kind of a setback. Like yeah. you feel like if, if I, I say it, if I they're going to make it yeah. into a sermon. Yeah, they're going to make it in, in, do, do into a story I'm a sermon. Mm. So like, and that will humiliate you yeah. and dehumanize you. Yeah, himself. something like that. So you maybe so you rather die with your addiction. Yeah. So like, okay, maybe explain yourself. You just need someone who you can truly trust that you need. This one is a true friend, yeah. whom can just encourage you, but not like people who you just pet randomly. Yeah. Yeah. But imagine you telling your, let's say. Yeah, still the same, 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 same problem. Mm -hmm. You're telling your friend, a male friend, you'll be like, you know what, bro? I've been fighting this and that. The first mm -hmm. thing they'll be like, eh, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 salam, eh, Buddha, you know? <laughs> the conversation yeah. goes like that. So you, you prefer to just like, you know what? Yeah, it's me and God. Yeah, <laughs> if it, uh, you yeah. Know, if you die, you die. Yeah. But I feel like that is dangerous, and that's why men don't live longer. <laughs> yeah, like as compared so. to a lady, she will cry to her friend. Her mm -hmm. friends will even notice her behaviors have changed, and they'll even tell her, "Aki, you don't look the same." They'll be, "Aki, babe, you don't look the same." <laughs> you know. But for you, who tells you you don't look the same? They'll be like, "Get out of here. Go get money. <laughs> <laughs> why are you not looking <laughs> the parts? You yeah. should always look the parts. Get it together." To go hit the yeah. gym, you will be strong, something yes. like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but you know. Or go work. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. But you no, know, men, yeah. we should always prefer to talk. Because yeah. maybe something we are, something is eating us inside. Yeah. We are dying. Mm. Maybe that's why you find yourself like most of men, they tend to drive their depression to drugs. Yeah. They use like maybe if they drink one bottle of liquor, they will feel okay. Yeah. But they don't know, like, if they wake up tomorrow, yeah. they will still feel the same situation. Mm -hmm. But if you find someone who, who you can talk to, yeah. I like how male pastors handle people. Mm -hmm. So for you, if personally, if you had an issue, you prefer to go to a male pastor than a female pastor? Yeah, a male pastor or a, or a male therapist. Or a male therapist, yeah. Because that's a talk to man to man. Man to man, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Get that. yeah. So, if you talk to a man to man, yeah. they can. They view it from your, from their manly lenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man from the <laughs> more than when you yeah. sp when you speak to a lady because a lady maybe if you talk maybe something like drug addiction. Yeah. They say like. You know, or even sex addiction. You know, people mm -hmm. don't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So Just you like know, this is a morning show. We can't yeah. delve into. Yeah. So you know, you thing, went. Yeah. Okay, you go to a lady. You talk to him or you. You, do you talk to her yeah. about your addiction, right? Mm -hmm. Now, because she will only, in a motherly nature, start lecturing you, not knowing, like, mm -hmm. she should give you advices, but for her, she will start lecturing you on what, what, on what, what to you do, not to do. Yeah, what where to you do. went wrong. Yeah, where <laughs> you went wrong. And then you feel like, yo, yo, I needed this. Yeah. I just needed I just needed a solution. Yeah. In fact, you need comfort. Yeah, <laughs> comfort, not like... Uh, <laughs> not yeah. directions yeah. Yeah. and, and pointing like out your faults. But, yeah. but if you approach a man and then you guys talk man, man, man to, to man, man yeah. you will feel like you are majorly accommodated. Yeah. Okay. And, and you expect yourself something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, still on the same rap. Mm -hmm. How openly can a man talk about their addictions to, let's say, a trusted person? And now let's delve into friendships. Like, mm -hmm. how close do you trust your friends, and how do you hold them so dear to a point you can tell them the worst of the words? And uh, mm -hmm. by that I mean as well. Uh, they say, "Show me who you are," and they tell you who yes. your friends yeah. are. I'm a show me show your me friends, your friends. Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. So in this circle of friends, are there people that can? You know, hold secrets because for me, I believe holding secrets is a talent. Yeah, Be because sure. ninety percent of people, when you tell them a secret, my friend, they expect it on a blog somewhere, especially if it's something that's just mm -hmm. extreme. Yeah, rarely, it will be a conversation in the next conversation. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of trusting friends, especially now in a men's uh, cycle, mm -hmm. how strong do you hold these friends in terms of trust yeah. that you can tell them anything? Leave alone one, two, or three, or even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, I was just talking about myself personally and my friends. Yeah. And I feel like, because uh, like, that's a good start. Me personally, me and my friends, uh, my male friends, I feel like I trust them 100%. Uh -huh. You know, because, uh, and I feel like I can tell them issues that I won't really tell my female friends. Because yeah. 
uh, from the way Hillary said it, you know, from there is that perspective of, of like they sing it from another man's lens, you know. So like they understand you more than a son. What you say, they might yeah. probably be in the same situation, you know. And yeah. then they're gonna be like, but you bro, is like pro Marx. Hey, you know? what I mean? What I mean? You're like, well, oh, you're you're almost in the theater level of yeah. of, of, yeah, of my crisis. Yeah, and I feel like uh, yeah. that has really kind of feel like helped me also. Yeah. I'm a, like generally helps us as a f like as friends, you know, yeah. deal with the issues. And you don't become a community. A, yeah, we find a way of even like yeah. comically, you know, cracking some jokes. It's not a crack it, joke. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like man, earlier this uh, in the morning when I came maybe to school, this yeah. issue was pressing me. This issue was eating me up. But now yeah. that I've talked to these people, I mean, it feels like the weight I has been lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. I feel uh, like uh, we should learn to just get yourself, you know, a group of friends that you trust. People yeah. that maybe I can say like you have the same vision, you know, you know that yeah. set of friends that una feel peer. These yeah. are people like, uh, we're in the same space, same community. These are people who you know have like similar ideas with you. If yeah. you're friends with those people, I feel like, and then you guys work on building that trust. You know, you've never let anyone down. You know, you yeah. guys have always been there for one another. I feel like it's gonna be, it's gonna come naturally. Talking yeah. about issues like that. Yeah. Two, you're just talking about them. You're like, hey, bro, me, I'm having this. Today yeah. in the morning, I didn't eat. Janata didn't even eat. I don't even have money. And yeah. then I'll be like, oh, this chick energy. broke my heart. Yeah, and I'm struggling to cope up. Where? Actually, I saw a video juicy on TikTok. Yeah. There's this Gen Z. I believe, she, yeah, he, he said he's a Gen Z. Yeah. We're it to PMR. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw tomatoes. And he was opening up about how he's, a, like, he's a genuine lover. Like, he's a diehard lover. Mm -hmm. And he has just found out that the girl is cheating on him wow. with a very close buddy. And so he's so disappointed, he mm -hmm. just doesn't know how to process the emotions, but he feels like he's about to cry. Mm -hmm. And then I loved the way the ladies jumped in and said, oh, oh, there was a lot of <laughs> oh, in, in between. Because I don't know, how, 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 how do you also like uh, view that? Because this, one, so this dude was very genuine. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do, but he says he's a diehard lover. Mm -hmm. He loved this chick so much, but he's just discovered he's cheating with his buddy. His close friend? Yes. Wow. So this is a rock and a hard place, mm -hmm, literally. Sure. But I feel like uh, I've always asked myself that question, you know, when I find like my my girlfriend uh, and then cheating on my on me with my brother, like my friend, yeah. like a close friend of mine, or and somebody that, in your circle, or somebody in that my you circle, never expected, somebody you never expected, and maybe most of the time also they have no idea. Yeah, maybe. But how how do they have no idea and yet? You are in that community, and I'm trying to also piece up. Or like in the same thing, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for sure. I feel like that can be odd. Uh, to in, in those situations, everyone yeah. knows what's going on. Probably yeah. accepts you. You know, mm. uh, your girlfriend probably knows this is your friend, and your friend knows yeah. this is your girl. Definitely, he knows that this is uh, Nani's girlfriend. Yeah. But then in that situation, you're trying to, you know, figure it out. Who's in the wrong? I feel like it's your girlfriend, Mushasiku, because she is your girlfriend. You know, she's yeah. the one that, you know... You she should have known better. I mean, yeah, you owe her loyalty. You know, she owes yeah. you loyalty. I mean, yeah, you guys owe better. one another loyalty. You yeah. know, more than... Like, this is just a friend. And, you know, we yeah. know how things go. I mean, we're all human in this world. Yeah. You really expect... You can't really trust, you know, your friend, like, blindly. I mean, the yeah. trust that you can put in your girlfriend, in a kwanga mingi sana, than the one you yeah. put in your in friend. Your buddies, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, this is a relationship. You guys, yeah. you know... And it's promise. a romantic Yeah, and it's a romantic. You have strings for attached. Sure. Yeah. So I feel like the person who's in the wrong, you when you guys had a certain commitment, yeah, you're gonna be loyal to one another, you know? Yeah. You're gonna do this together and then now uh, they go against your back. I feel like yeah. they needed to tell you like your your friend yeah. is making moves on me. You know, that's the yeah. that's the in the perfect setting, she yeah. should have told you your friend is moving, he, like he's making moves on me, you yeah. know, Tebu Mongeleshe. But yeah. now, but maybe she, maybe she's she's now done with you, almost getting done with you and gravitating towards. <laughs> and that's the thing. And that's the thing. That's what it's, it's, it's happened a lot. It's like yeah. he's, she's with you, but she feels like your friend, your buddy's mm -hmm. her type. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> convolution is. Uh, I don't know. Have you, have you seen this meme that you're walking with your with your with your uh, girlfriend and she <laughs> sees her husband or she sees yeah, her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. So boyfriend she's exactly. like she's working with you but <laughs> she's just identified yeah. her counterpart and in that seat and like hey, yeah, my friend man you guys have a lot to work on <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you process that as a man now now in terms of now telling your friends tell me because I, I believe at this point that is a shameful act really shameful you 
I'm saying that experience is a shameful yeah. act. Yeah. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Extreme, okay. Talking to a fellow man about yeah. my problems, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. You send me on my side, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I have one friend. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whom, like, all that we have shared, kama muta kona shida. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Si, si, okay, to see scare penny, the talker like, um, scare, come on, you blog somewhere, and then you feel like you find like this is kind of a comfortable person to share your problems to him more than anybody else because you feel secure. Like, if you tell him your secret, you like you won't get it in a different, in a different person, something like that, yeah, and uh. And coming to explain, uh, expressing yourself to a lady, that's why it's a disgrace. That's a risk? A disgrace. It's a disgrace. <laughs> so, so as a man, you should never tell a lady anything about what you're going through. Yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> yo, bro, like, <laughs> what is the worst experience you are? <laughs> 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 By the way, I believe it takes a lot yeah, to open yeah. up to a lady and tell yeah, it's, her it's that they have a crisis, mm -hmm. even borrowing money. Yeah, because. <laughs> but how easy is it to borrow from your mom than a lady? Anyways, we'll get to that. There's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you express yourself to a lady, yeah. be 50% sure <laughs> you will get the information from another one. From another friend. <laughs> yeah. So you'd rather not tell any lady what yeah. you're going through? No, I can't be. There's a time yeah. I shared my problem to a girl. Uh -huh. It was just a light... Light conversation. A light conversation. Uh -huh. And then it was, it was even a, a fiction, like something like a fiction of like... Oh, it mm -hmm. was not a true story. It was a story of Jabba, in short. Yeah. <laughs> and you find it later, yeah. a group friend who, who are close to close to you yeah. discuss to discussing and then you feel like yo yeah is you this how you become a topic in the community is this how they handle people yeah <laughs> and then you feel like i really trust them from there you have to <laughs> have, like no bro if i have to open up let it be my mom yeah it be my mom but not you know, not ladies but then you say get it because also there's pressure there's how will she view me there's yeah so how is she thinking about me? How is she feeling? But at the end of the day, I also feel like those are just, you know, thoughts. Mm -hmm. If literally you had to sit her down and ask her, so how do you think about me now that I've shared with you this is my past, especially something from yeah. your past too. I think it can be crazy. Mm -hmm. So we have to go, guys. Uh, it's 9.58, so you guys can say your social media and how mm -hmm. people can get to find you mm -hmm. very fast. I'll go with you, Wisdom. Yeah, so you can, <coughs> you can find me on Instagram at illusion. I double L U X I O N at illusion. Yeah, and uh, maybe TikTok, big whiz. Yeah, then let's, let's engage. Okay. Yeah. So, so. Uh -huh. yeah me literally, I deal with Twitter. We only do X. Yeah. We only <laughs> lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> but even lawyers are on X as well. Yeah, I like politics. So Instagram, including that. Yeah, so, yeah. in at Twitter, you'll get me at Sahilari. Sahilari. Yeah. That's the only platform. So, so yeah. you know where to find him. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Alright, it has been a riveting conversation. I wish we continued because I think we are now like getting at the heart of it, mm -hmm. but as well as we've tackled a lot of issues that yeah. most boy children, what is the plural of boy child? I'm still struggling to get it. <laughs> boy children? We are still children. You are still. Alright, most men <laughs> grapple with, and I believe you've gotten some two, three insights and you've been enlightened. So we'll definitely thank you both for coming through. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll definitely see you tomorrow for Innovations and um, Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Continue following us at Y254 channel. And personally, mine is a brand corner one. Have a fantastic Monday. See you tomorrow.